Hello and welcome to Intermediate Financial Accounting 2, Tutorial 20B. This is the second tutorial in a series related to accounting changes and errors. This tutorial has two learning objectives. The first will be to determine restated net income after adjusting for changes in inventory policy and depreciation policy. And second, to prepare a revised statement of retained earnings after adjusting for changes in inventory and depreciation policy. This tutorial is based on the Moriarty Inc. example, so please make sure that you have downloaded it and previewed it and are ready to proceed with our requirement one, which is preparing a schedule to show the calculation of the correct net income for the year 2021. What we do is we begin with our unadjusted income before taxes of $220,000. Now we'll deal with our first item, which is the change in inventory from FIFO to weighted average cost. This can seem a little confusing and overwhelming, but remember that inventory errors self-correct after two years. So really the only years we need to be concerned about are 2020 and 2021. What this box here does is it takes a simplified approach into saying, okay, between the two years, the increase in inventory under FIFO was $10,000, right? 170 from 2020, less 160 from 2021. Then the increase under weighted average is 8,000, right? 154 from 2020 uh, to 162 in 2021. So that's an $8,000 difference. So really, because of the change in policy, the increase in cost of goods sold under weighted average would only be $2,000. So that is the amount that we would need to reduce retained earnings by, right? Because cost of goods would go up because inventory under weighted average would be lower, right? If inventory is lower, then cost of goods has to go up. And if cost of goods goes up, then retained earnings drops. But if you want to see it from the beginning, in 2018, the FIFO inventory was 140, and if we reported under weighted average, it would be 136,000. So the inventory is overstated, in essence, by $4,000, which means that the inventory that should have been expensed is not. Inventory is understated by 4,000, and if the inventory is understated, then the net income is overstated, and the retained earnings are overstated. Great. In 2019, the FIFO inventory was 150. Under weighted average, it would be 145 for a difference of five. That means the inventory was too high, the expense is too low, then the net income is too high, and the retained earnings is also too high, but by $1,000 because this 4,000 carries over into the next year. So this 4,000 should have been expensed in 2018, but ends up being expensed in 2019. So that's why we take the 5,000 minus the 4,000 gives you a $1,000 difference. Now we proceed to 2020. Same idea, FIFO reported at 160, it would have been 154,000 under weighted average. So the inventory is uh, overstated by 6,000, so the expense is understated by 6,000. The net income is overstated by 6,000. And the retained earnings is $1,000 over, but because the 2019 carries over to the next year and the 2018 drops off. So at this point, this is gone. And so this $1,000 is the 6000 in the current year minus the 5000 that would have been expensed from 2018 that ends up being expensed in 2019. Now we head over to 2021. Inventory error self-correct over two years. So the 2019 is gone. We have inventory reported under FIFO of 170, would be 162,000 under weighted average, difference of eight. So same idea as in previous years, the inventory is overstated, the expense is understated, that means that the net income is overstated, and the retained earnings is overstated by $2,000 because we're only concerned about the two current years, and that is 8,000 in 2021 minus the 6,000 in 2020 gives you a difference of 2,000. The whole point of this is you do not have to look at any years prior, the current year and the previous year because the inventory errors self-correct themselves over two years. The next item is the change in depreciation expense that we'll talk about in note two. 
As recorded, the depreciation was 54167 That's based on a cost of 700000 minus a residual of 500000 divided by 12 years. But it should have been 700000 minus the residual of 50 minus the grant of 100000 divided by 12 years. So it should have been 45833 What does this mean for us? The depreciation is recorded in 2020 was 54167 but the revised depreciation in 2021 because of the error right we, the books are open so we can fix it we want to fix it this year is we would take our cost of 700,000 minus the uh, residual of 50 minus the grant and then subtract the depreciation as it should have been this 45 833 and divide by 9 years remaining because this is a change in the useful life if we were to look at it from the perspective of this little chart down here in 2020, they expensed 54,167. It should have been 54,833, so a difference of 8,334. And then in this year, because of the change, we have expense of that was 54,167. It should have been 56,019. And so that's a difference of 1,852. Now be careful here, this 1,852 is the only item that gets changed here because this 2020 would be adjusted to retain earnings. Remember what we're doing here is revised income statement, right? We're not doing a retained earnings statement yet. So this goes to the income statement and this would be adjusted to retained earnings. What we have now, after our opening, unadjusted income before taxes, right? A deduction of $2,000 for the change in inventory from FIFO to weighted to average cost. A deduction in the change in depreciation expense of $1,852 means our adjusted income before taxes is $216,148. We must deduct income taxes at 30%, so we take off $64,845. And that gives us net income of $151,304. And that will end up in the statement of retained earnings just in a little bit. The second requirement will be to prepare in good form a statement of retained earnings for the year ended December 31st, 2021. So in good form, right? Company name, Moriarty Inc., statement of retained earnings, year ended December 31st, 2021. We always start with the balance at the beginning of the year as previously stated. So $1,200,000 is what was previously reported. Our first change is going to be related to the change in accounting policy. Recall that under weighted average, it should be $154,000. Under FIFO, it was $160,000. That resulted in a $6,000 decrease in retained earnings and inventory because opening retained earnings is overstated. That $6,000 adjustment times 30% for income tax is $1,800. So we will deduct from beginning retained earnings $4,200 due to the change in accounting policy. The next item will be the correction of the government grant error. The government grant that's included in the 2020 income was $100,000. It shouldn't have been included in income, so we need to subtract 100,000, but of course there's an income tax effect of 30%, so 30,000, which means a net adjustment after tax of $70,000. So we're going to deduct that from the retained earnings. Next item will be the depreciation expense correction. In note five here, the depreciation expenses recorded was 54,167. The depreciation should have been 45,833. Because the depreciation was too high, we need to adjust the retained earnings for 8,334, the difference between the two. And then, of course, adjust for 30% tax. So 30% of that is $2,500, resulting in a net addition to retained earnings of $5,834. When we start with our beginning retained earnings balance of $1,200,000 and factor in all the adjustments for accounting policy, government grant error, and depreciation, the revised or restated beginning balance is $1,131,634. To that, we will add net income of $151,304 and then subtract the dividends declared. Now, how we figure out dividends declared is we can reconstruct the T account for dividends payable. 
We have a beginning balance of 20,000. We know that the dividends paid were 90, and we know that we have an ending balance of 30. That means we had to have declared 100,000. So 20 plus 100 is 120 minus 90 is 30. So that's how we end up with 100,000 dividends declared. Our retained earnings balance at the end of the year is $1,182,938. So now for some key points to remember. A restated statement of retained earnings or statement of changes in equity must begin with opening balances as originally stated. Any adjustments to beginning retained earnings must be net of income taxes followed by a restated opening balance. So this concludes tutorial 20B. We hope you found it useful and for more information and problems refer to your course materials. And if you want some uh, more exposure to accounting changes and errors, then you should proceed to tutorial 20C.